Great. Thank you so much for your patience and good morning. Assalamu alaikum and ni hao to our um, Chinese colleagues and honorable ambassador of China to Pakistan, Mr. Longong, and also uh, our esteemed guests and all the speakers and the panelists who have joined us for this very important dialogue on China-Pakistan Economic Corridor Green Development Higher Policy Dialogue. As just mentioned in the beginning that Professor Essen Iqbal will be joining us shortly. But um, I think in the interest of time, we would like to begin with the formal um, inauguration of this dialogue with a little bit of background of where we are coming from and how the agenda will unfold. So as most of, the, uh, most of you have already received the background concept note, dialogue that they are conducting. So for Pakistan and China, with the recent advance, advancements and mutual aspiration of fighting climate change and greening the development, I think it's the time of the need that we should also start working towards greening BRI and greening CPEG. So under these, there, so there are several areas of cooperation where Sustainable Development Policy Institute is um, initiating this CPEC Green Development Program to engage the key stakeholders from both countries and the governments, investors, regulators, developers, academia, and civil society to reflect on the success of the major initiatives implemented under the BRI and CPEC and seek a way forward to build better together. So the three, three main objectives of this event are to engage with the stakeholders for the information exchange on the opportunities and the development priorities in terms of green financing, green banking, green budgeting of CPEC to help achieve the common sustainable development goals. Also, this dialogue aims to facilitate the constructive discussion between Pakistani and Chinese, Chinese stakeholders to take and to lead and support the CPEC Green Development Roadmap towards delivering the SDGs and climate targets while ensuring the socioeconomic development in Pakistan. And last but not the least, we are here to identify what could be the potential avenues and the opportunities of replicating the best practices we have from China in the green growth policies and green innovation through knowledge sharing, capacity building, technology transfer, and science for policy. With this, with, I would like to invite the Executive Director of Sustainable Development Policy Institute for the opening remarks, and we'll begin with the proceedings. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Hina. Uh, Honorable uh, uh, Ambassador of uh, China uh, to Pakistan, uh, Excellency, uh, and Mongering, uh, Honorable uh, Dignitaries and uh, Ambassadors uh, of uh, other uh, countries. Uh, Mr. Harun Sharif, uh, former uh, Minister of uh, uh, Investment and former Chair uh, Board of Investment. Indeed, a great honor and a pleasure to welcome you uh, this morning on uh, uh, this uh, uh, CPEC and uh, this uh, Green Development uh, Initiatives. But before I start my uh, formal uh, welcome, uh, let me also convey that I just received a call from uh, uh, Minister's office. Uh, uh, he is uh, uh, in Prime Minister's office and he would be joining us as soon as uh, the meeting we have finished. Uh, he uh, sent his uh, apologies and regrets for uh, uh, being uh, late, uh, uh, but uh, hopefully he'll be able to uh, join us uh, in this uh, uh, morning uh, session. Uh, so is uh, his uh, other uh, cabinet uh, colleagues. So due to uh, certain political developments, they are having uh, uh, an important meeting uh, in the prime minister's office. Uh, but uh, coming back to uh, today's uh, uh, event uh, and uh, uh, the uh, theme of it, as uh, uh, Hina mentioned, uh, the whole purpose is uh, to uh, discuss uh, how to green 
uh, CPEC, which we term as uh, one of uh, the uh, jewel and uh, one of uh, the flagship uh, uh, initiative within Belt and Road Initiative. And the greening uh, CPEC uh, actually it translates into uh, greening Belt and Road Initiative and uh, uh, how it can be possible and uh, what sort of prerequisites are there. Uh, this is what we'll be discussing in uh, the technical uh, sessions. Uh, but uh, uh, before that, and to set the scene, uh, I think it's important to know that uh, the, uh, when we're talking of uh, uh, CPEC, when we're talking of uh, infrastructure uh, development, we need to keep in mind uh, the triple planetary crisis uh, that is affecting and haunting uh, the whole world. Uh, the first C, of course, is uh, COVID-19. Uh, the second C is conflict uh, that is uh, uh, taking place in different parts of the uh, uh, world, but uh, it is uh, actually affecting uh, uh, the rest of uh, uh, the world. Uh, and third C is uh, climate change. And we feel that uh, the fourth C, CPEC, uh, for Pakistan is extremely crucial and important if we have to tackle uh, the first three Cs. I'll start with the COVID-19, and I think it was, uh, it could have been extremely impossible uh, to brave uh, the waves of COVID-19 without the help from our Chinese friend in terms of vaccination. Uh, so it was actually uh, the vaccinations from China uh, that uh, set the foundation of our health resilience, and we were able to the first wave. We showed Pakistan's uh, uh, support to one China policy and uh, we feel provocation uh, from uh, any uh, part of uh, the world uh, that can increase conflict uh, should be avoided and uh, uh, should be uh, actually uh, safeguarded. Uh, so that the rest of the world uh, doesn't get uh, affected uh, from it. And then the third C, which is climate change. And uh, for climate change, uh, the whole uh, purpose of uh, greening uh, CPAC, uh, that's what we are discussing. Climate change, we know uh, it's all about carbon emission. Uh, Pakistan uh, has been observing uh, the increased frequency of rains and uh, uh, the flash floods in Balochistan and now the uh, floods in part of Punjab uh, uh, due to uh, increased availability of water in Eastern River, uh, which comes, uh, of course, uh, due to increased rain uh, in uh, uh, India. And uh, uh, so uh, this is uh, one uh, manifestation of uh, climate change. But then uh, the heat wave in uh, Europe and uh, uh, the uh, historic high temperature in uh, United Kingdom uh, uh, reaching 42 degrees Celsius. It means that uh, none of the country uh, in the world is safe from climate change. You start from uh, North America and go all the way to Asia Pacific, Pacific Australia, you will find uh, the forest fires, uh, the un uh, very uh, unreliable uh, and uh, increased frequency of rain and drought and uh, all uh, sort. And uh, to uh, cope with uh, climate change and to increase adaptation. Once again, uh, we uh, require uh, the policies of greening uh, our development. And in order to think of uh, greening uh, uh, CPEC, uh, today's consultation is being organized. STPI is a, a member of uh, an uh, alliance, uh, which is uh, uh, the uh, alliance of Chinese and Pakistani think tanks uh, to uh, green uh, Belt and Road uh, Initiative. And uh, as part of that alliance, uh, we are working on uh, how uh, CPEC can uh, actually uh, give uh, some uh, positive uh, impetus. And uh, just to uh, uh, give you uh, uh, one of uh, the important intervention that can be done under uh, CPEC, which is part of a long-term plan of uh, CPEC, uh, is uh, uh, Pakistan and China's uh, joint uh, work on agriculture. 
uh, in the phase one, we had been focusing on infrastructure. We had been focusing on much needed uh, power. Uh, we had been uh, focusing on uh, road infrastructure, but uh, in phase two and in the long term plan, as you know, uh, it is all about you know, using uh, that hardware uh, for soft interventions and agriculture and livestock uh, is uh, one of the important uh, components. Now, why I mentioned agriculture uh, specifically uh, here, uh, because we uh, found this year uh, our wheat yield, we couldn't uh, achieve uh, the target of our wheat uh, due to uh, the unusual heat wave in February and March. So while uh, the wheat grain uh, was uh, uh, premature uh, due to uh, this uh, added uh, heat wave, uh, the grain, uh, it uh, uh, attained maturity, but uh, the contents were not there. And that was one of the reasons we couldn't uh, achieve our wheat target. Uh, similarly, 40% of our mango uh, uh, yield uh, uh, target could not be achieved again due to heat waves and now uh, due to uh, the, the rains. Uh, so uh, climate change is uh, affecting our uh, food insecurity. It is uh, affecting our livelihoods. And uh, with, within this uh, broader uh, agreement on the culture that uh, President Al Alvi and President Xi, they uh, signed uh, when President Alvi made uh, his maiden visit to uh, China. Uh, there are actually uh, uh, potential uh, available uh, for research and agriculture, for research on new seed varieties, uh, for research on climate smart agriculture, for research on things which are needed now, not to, uh, again the untapped potential of uh, Gavadar uh, is uh, again uh, uh, one thing that uh, reminds us that cleaning and graining uh, uh, CPEC and making uh, the best use of uh, uh, Gavadar uh, port and uh, Balochistan uh, uh, the, uh, territories, the fields of uh, vast fields of uh, Balochistan uh, in terms of uh, renewable energy uh, that has got a lot of potential. So the uh, all the coastal areas of Pakistan, uh, they have the potential for solar wind energy, and uh, we need to see that uh, how uh, we can increase uh, our uh, potential uh, collaboration with uh, China on producing renewable energy. And you will find that in the uh, second session, uh, the representative of uh, Three Gods, uh, which is one of the leading uh, corporations, uh, one of the leading private sector entity of China working on renewable energy, uh, they would be uh, here and they would be uh, sharing collaboration. It can uh, go on and on, but uh, of, uh, today's uh, discussion and I hope that uh, once our uh, uh, political representatives, uh, they also uh, join after the uh, PM meeting, they will also be able to shed uh, more light on uh, the things uh, that government of Pakistan is uh, uh, initiating uh, with uh, this cleaning and greening uh, CPEC and Belt and Road Initiative on both sides uh, on uh, in China as well as in uh, Pakistan. I remember our meeting uh, with the, uh, the then Prime Minister Shahid Khakan Abbasi uh, back in uh, 2018. Uh, uh, whereby a group of civil society organizations, uh, we went to him uh, to share our concerns on uh, coal-based uh, power uh, plants. And he categorically told us that there is a cap on coal-based power plants. Pakistan will not have uh, any further coal-based power plant. Uh, that uh, became Pakistan's official policy heard from China that China would not be investing in uh, coal-based power plants uh, uh, across uh, uh, the borders uh, outside China. So these are some uh, very uh, positive uh, uh, development. And finally, I would conclude that uh, uh, nature doesn't uh, like vacuum. And uh, we know that uh, Trumpization of the United States uh, when uh, uh, President Trump, uh, he decided to withdraw from your uh, Paris uh, agreement, 
uh, that provided a chance uh, uh, to China to show its leadership on glo global climate negotiations. And uh, that, uh, uh, I think, uh, initiation and that initiative is the beginning of uh, greening of Belt and Road uh, Initiative. So from uh, there till today, uh, one can see that in multilateral uh, negotiations, uh, climate uh, negotiations and in, uh, uh, international uh, uh, moves. Uh, China has been persistently uh, uh, global commitments of uh, carbon uh, emission uh, reduction. Uh, Pakistan uh, too, uh, as part of G77 plus China, uh, endorses those uh, position. And uh, uh, we are uh, very optimistic and very hopeful uh, that together uh, with the other developing countries and with the support of uh, uh, China and Chinese technology, uh, we can actually uh, out of CPEC, uh, which can be shown as a Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, once again, thank you very much for uh, joining today. And I again apologize on behalf of uh, our uh, ministers. Thank you very much. Um, for such today to discuss the potential avenues and explore how we can make CPEC a best model of green development on the EVRI. So with this, I would like to move on to introducing uh, um, the panelists and the esteemed guests for the first inaugural session. So we have, we are very fortunate to be joined by Honorable Mr. Nongrong, Ambassador of China to Pakistan. Sir, if you could have you on the stage, please. We are very honored to have Mr. Moinun Har, Ambassador of Pakistan to China. Unfortunately, since he's based in China and couldn't join online, he has a video message that we will be playing just right after. Next, I would like to invite Mr. Harun Sharif, former chairman and state minister, board of investment, to kindly please, sir, proceed. Thank you, Mr. List, um, as we wait for Honorable Minister for Planning, Development, and Special Initiatives, I would also like to invite Dr. Hassan Daudbert, CEO of Pakhtunpa Board of Investment and Trade, to please come on the stage. Thank you. Thank you so much to all the guests who have joined us this morning. I would like to navigate towards inviting Honorable Ambassador Mr. Nongrong for his keynote address. Thank you. Honorable Dr. Abib Sulari. Executive Director of SPPI. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, good morning, Assalamu alaikum, high level policy dialogue and exchange views with you. The SPPI continues to make Pakistan's voice be heard for global sustainable development and I appreciate your efforts in organizing the constructive dialogue. This is a useful platform for gathering wisdom from all 
stakeholders and jointly promoting the green development of CPAC. And I think uh, yesterday, uh, Prime Minister uh, have an uh, interview with the uh, uh, Global Time from China. I think we all get a positive information from uh, Prime Minister. I would like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt thanks to all the guests and friends in our two countries for their efforts and contribution to the development of CPAC. I wish the dialogue a complete success. And I'm very happy to see friends from different countries. I think we can cooperate in the CPAC area. Nearly, nearly nine years after the BRI was proposed, 144 countries and 32 international organizations have signed a cooperation document on joint construction of BRI. The BRI has become the world's largest international cooperation platform. In recent years, in order to implement the high quality joint construction of the BRI, China and the BRI partner countries have jointly proposed a series of new initiatives and measures, such as building a healthy, green, and digital silk road. The BRI promotes the construction of green infrastructure, the development of green technology, and green finance. In the first half of 2020, China's investment in the new renewable energy sector in the BRI partner countries has exceeded that in the fossil energy sector. President Xi Jinping announced that China aims to have carbon dioxide emission peak before 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality before 2060, and would support other developing countries in developing green and low carbon energy. China has promoted the establishment of the BRI International Green Development Coalition, jointly launched the Belt and Road Green Investment Principles and Green Development Partnership Initiative with partner countries and step up the construction of the Green Silk Road. Let's come to the CPAC. The CPAC is an important pilot project of the BRI. With joint efforts of both parties, the CPAC has been continuously enriched in its development and construction. Now it has established 11 joint working groups, including long-term planning, water port, energy, transportation infrastructure, industry, social economic development, agriculture, science and technology, security, international cooperation and information technology industry. CPAC is steadily moving toward high quality development energy sector is one of the fattest and most fruitful area of cooperation under CPAC. In recent years, the cooperation between the two countries in the field of green, of clean energy has been continuously strengthened. At present, five wind power projects have been completed under CPAC with a total capacity of 300 megawatt. And another one, 300 megawatt solar power project has been completed. As CPAC enters the stage of high quality development, the proportion of green energy projects will continue to increase. Colored hydropower plant has successfully entered commercial operation and the large hydropower project such as SK, Patan, 
and Kohala are progressing smoothly. Prime Minister Shabbat paid a visit to the Karat in May. He praised the plan, first of its kind under CPEC, would provide Pakistan with clean and cheap electricity and promote the green development of Pakistan. The three coal fire power plants under CPEC, Sahiwa, Paul Kasim, and China Power Hub, all use cleaner and more efficient supercritical technology. All sewage and wastewater from the plants are recycled and reduced with zero discharge. There is no black smoke. So Sahiwa Power Plant has won the Gold Medal Award for Outstanding Engineering Design. Matiari to Lahore transmission line reduces the line loss from 70% to 4%, greatly reducing energy loss and improving efficiency. Green, de green development of the CPEC is boosting local employment in Pakistan. According to statistics, the CPEC has created 85,000 jobs for Pakistan. For example, the construction of Bada port has created 4,000 jobs, among which 3,800 are Pakistani people. Sahiwa Power Plant currently employs 1,300 people, among which Pakistani employees are 1.6 times of Chinese employees. Sahiwa Power Plant has also trained 245 Pakistani engineers and 377 Pakistani managers. The Port Kasim Power Plant created 4,000 jobs during peak with Pakistani employees. Three fourth of Chinese employees. This job creation and skill uplift help enhancing Pakistan's green and sustainable development capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, the BRI aims to build a better life for mankind and achieve green and sustainable development. The CPEC also emphasizes green initiatives such as green infrastructure, green energy, and green finance. We notice that Pakistani government has set a target of achieving 60% clean and renewable energy by 2030. Prime Minister Shabazz also announced a grand vision of launching 40, 14,000 megawatt solar power projects in the coming months. China, as the island brother of Pakistan, is ready to make use of our experience and technology in related field to assist Pakistan brothers realize its vision. We have every reason to believe that in the future, our cooperation on green development will become a new highlight of China-Pakistan relations, as well as a new driving force for CPEC. Congratulations again on the success of the dialogue. Thank you for your invitation. Shukriya. Thank you so much, Honorable Ambassador, for such an encouraging speech. And it clearly shows that fighting and fighting climate change and greening CPEC is a mutual aspiration of both countries. And it's very important to engage um, in such dialogues to increase the um, engagement with the key stakeholders of increasing more investments in clean energy, clean innovation, technologies, and more on. So thank you so much for your um, great remarks. With this, I would like to request the IT team to please assist us in 
playing the um, message from Mr. Moin al Haq, Ambassador of Pakistan to China. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Honorable Minister Ahsan Iqbal Sahib, Minister Chaudhary Salik Hussain Sahib, Senator Mushta, Mushayid Hussain Sayyid Sahib, Excellency Ambassador Nongrong, Dr. Abis Lari, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, a very good afternoon from Beijing, Dajiahab. In the beginning, I would like to commend the Sustainable Development Policy Institute to organize this high-level policy dialogue on high-level development of CPAC. It is a timely initiative at a time when our two governments have renewed their commitment to the high-quality development of CPAC projects in Pakistan, its extension to Afghanistan, and inviting third-party participation. I am confident that this conference would also send a strong message to the detractors and opponents of CPAC. Ladies and gentlemen, the most striking feature about CPAC is its all-encompassing nature, focusing not only on energy, infrastructure and transport, but also on the high-quality socio-economic development. It is people-centric, socially inclusive, environmentally friendly and green and sustainable. Pakistan is one of the earliest proponents and supporter of BRI, a visionary project of President Xi Jinping. It has transformed the economic landscape of Pakistan. It has upgraded Pakistan's physical and communication infrastructure, built our energy capacities, generated employment, upgraded remote and underdeveloped areas, and improved the livelihoods of our people. The two governments now are placing a strong emphasis on the green development of CPAC. At the second Belt and Road Forum held in April 2019, leaders of the BRI countries including Pakistan agreed to promote economic, fiscal, social, financial and environmental sustainability of projects while striking a good balance among uh, between economic growth, social progress, and environmental protection. BRI International Green Development Coalition was also launched, which calls for ensuring long-term long green and sustainable development of all member countries. Dear friends, the recently uh, completed Karot hydropower project is an example of clean, green vision of CPAC. We are happy to see more and more CPAC projects taking into consideration the green development aspect. In CPAC phase 2 especially, the issues related to environmental protection, biodiversity, ecology and afforestation have assumed greater importance. Recently, our two countries launched China-Pakistan Green Corridor to focus on areas of agriculture, environment and food climate change and food security. Our two sides are now working to finalize the blueprint of the Green Corridor to carry out practical cooperation. And in this respect, agriculture has been identifies, identified as a key area of cooperation. As you know, a special working group on agriculture has been formed under CPAC and our two sides are working very hard to, to hold its next meeting before the CPAD and JCC meeting. And there is of course an action plan uh, which is being undergoing with the support of many uh, research institutions uh, and academia and uh, ministries to focus uh, uh, on, on cooperation in the agriculture sector and learn from each other. China is a leader in the agriculture sector, so we are uh, learning from Chinese best practices uh, in terms of development of hybrid seeds, uh, upgrading our irrigation system, cold chain network, and of course uh, improving the, the network between, uh, between the farm and the market and to bring value addition to our farm produce. 
Ladies and gentlemen, as we move uh, on to crystallized green development, I believe that the role of think tanks and academia would be extremely important besides G2G and B2B cooperation. The events like this uh, conference would encourage discourse on promotion of green development, strengthen institutional linkages for focused result-oriented cooperation, uh, um, uh, strengthen our strategic com communication and help identifying the best practices for green development of CPAC and its projects. I wish this conference a great success. I thank you and long live China-Pakistan friendship. Thank you so much. With this, I would um, like to announce that Minister for Planning and um, Development <clears throat> Commission, uh, we will be joining us in just a couple of minutes. Uh, so we would um, like to host him um, during this time. Meanwhile, um, we have a um, um, overview presentation um, by Dr. Hassan Daudbat. Uh, of how the CPEC, what is the status of the CPEC projects and uh, the trends that we are seeing in the green development. Um, I also wanted to highlight um, along with this that STPI is a very uh, proud founding member of BRIDC. That has just also been mentioned by uh, Ambassador Moinul Haq Sahab, which is the BRI Green Coalition. And also, as Dr. Abid mentioned, that we are the founding members of Green CPEC Alliance. So we have a strong agenda and a strong engagement on this arena, and we'll be looking forward to support and best of all research and advocacy capacity. So moving on, I would request Dr. Hassan Daud to please um, come up uh, with the presentation. Thank you. Milai Rahman Rahim, Dr. Abid Sunari, Tashe Niha, former Minister Harun uh, Shri Saab, uh, dignitaries and uh, and all those who are interested in development, the eco-friendly green development of CPAC. Uh, Assalamu Alaikum Niha, Zaw Shan Hao. Uh, I should be starting with a short preamble and then leading you to the to the way that CPEC was the initial planning of CPEC was done and also how the future plans of CPEC are being crafted in terms of its development. You go to the next slide. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we are all aware, climate change is one of the humanity's greatest challenge. And high temperature and extreme weather events have dramatically increased. And while the world's most vulnerable countries have contributed the least to the greenhouse uh, effect and gases emission, they are the most at risk and less least equipped in terms of combating this challenge. And of course, Pakistan is one of those countries which is under threat because of the climate change. However, regional conflicts and bitter politics have traditionally impeded economic growth. And we keep saying this, and of course, our region is the least integrated region because of this bitter politics. Under the impact of COVID-19, the world has realized the humanity is a community of shared destiny with the global crisis and realized sustainable development. Under this, a strong, innovative economy can help address this issue and the green development of CPEC offers a new development paradigm by investing in green infrastructure, which is necessary to avoid irreversible carbon in effect and also the global climate change. I would also like to highlight, and I see some of my private sector friends sitting here, that the private sector is particularly important in infrastructure construction in the next phase. And it can bridge the investment gap in order to scale up promising green technologies. And we work with certain in, in KP also and in uh, uh, CPEC projects um, closely associated with Kerot, Suki Kenari, Kohala, and rest of the projects and the supercritical technology that the ambassador referred to. 
But more importantly, is some of the data that we need to understand in terms of global emission uh, and in terms of targets that have been set for 1.5 degree pathway. And even if we work closely, work uh, under the framework of CPAC, the challenge is so huge, so immense that uh, that lot of effort. And I acknowledge uh, SGPI in terms of bringing this topic forth in term and the overall development agenda for the government. And when the minister would be here, he would be talking about. Also, if you look at this uh, slide in front of you, we'll see that in next, by 2050, perhaps the, the renewable energy share in the overall will grow by up to 80%. And this is the kind of investment I'm referring to when we speak of the private sector. Huge, huge opportunity. While there are challenges, while there are constraints, there are huge opportunities. And I think large enterprises working on energy sector should look into this uh, in terms of their, uh, their case. And of course, we were talking about BRI and President Xi Jinping has clearly articulated that developing uh, biodiversity, new technologies to protect Earth is a common agenda. And he's been advocating this wherever he's spoken about development, shared prosperity. And I think that is the part of, of the growth agenda we have under the national economic and social development agenda of China. And we need to understand that under the 14 five-year plan, they are working on strengthening exchanges and cooperation in climate change response. And this is where Pakistan can leverage CPEC and Belt and Road Initiative. And uh, the building of the Green Silk Road has witnessed continuous improvement. And I'll share the data in which from 2013 to 2019, of course, uh, after 2019, the data would be abstract because of COVID. Green road and a development path has been promoted in all the development agendas of the Chinese government. And I would urge SGPI to work closely with think tanks uh, uh, to actually benefit from the overall agenda of the Chinese government. And this is, this is how the projects are in terms of uh, BRI. And if you look at Pakistan, right in the middle, we have 28 projects and this number is growing uh, as, as we work on this. And overall, the projects of road infrastructure, port manufacturing have seen surge in the last uh, uh, eight years that uh, BRI and CPEC have, uh, were uh, from its inception. And we are seeing this growth and concern by the leadership and all JCCs that I've attended in the last one, I, I see the urge from leadership side from both the countries to work towards a, a development model which brings in new technologies and eco-friendly industry. But what are the major risks? We see risk in coal power plants. We see risk in hydropower uh, development. We do not see any risk in solar power plants. And that is also the agenda of the, of the government. And similarly, we see certain risk as far as the development of some of the other agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, Pakistan has been ranked globally in the top 10 countries more affected by climate change. And if this does not give us nightmares, what else would? And I think this should be highest on the agenda of, of the government. And when we work on policy articulation and when we were working on policy articulation for industrial policy, that was one of the prime uh, concern area of, of ours. And, and of course, the climate, uh, global climate index speaks about uh, how Pakistan has lost in terms of GDP. It speak, the Pakistan Economic Survey 2021 speaks about how reduce agriculture pro productivity. And uh, Dr. Abed Suleri has spoken about this. And, and of course, the economic report has also given us the reason to work on towards a global uh, agenda and, of course, leveraging from green CPEC. And because we cannot afford to have melting Himalayas, glaciers, because that would have a devastating effect on what we are working on. And of course, our population growth, the numbers that, that is growing, of course, is impacting the way that we are planning. So with this in mind, let's talk about CPEC and I'll quickly work on this. The targets that, and I see Mazar Saab sitting here working closely from, from, uh, from its first day till, till to now on the railway sector. Certain targets which set, and these targets helped us to navigate through the development agenda. The first target was for market cultivation, removing bottlenecks. Second target was period of expansion and development, working on industrial cooperation, 
where perhaps there is a lag and we have spoken a lot about that and now uh, the, the, the focus is towards the SEZ development. And third was period of maturity where the role of railway and of course, green development of CPEC was part of the long-term plan that was crafted in 2017. Uh, we were looking at CPEC in, in, in terms of uh, long-term plan and then the last eight years based on, on the overall planning from the first MOU that was signed till today, we have worked on, uh, on far reaching effects as far as energy, infrastructure, socioeconomic and Gawadar projects are concerned. But I think the way to go is on the agriculture part, the socioeconomic development, and perhaps in, in uh, 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 IT technology, uh, combating the challenges that, that are coming because of the climate change. And of course, CPEC under BRI helps to develop together with the shared prosperity, and please remember the big idea is to start transforming into local, renewable, clean, sustainable and long-term development of CPAC. That was part of the agenda, that remains part of the agenda, and this is how the development of CPAC will take place. We've spoken about one corridor, uh, many doors, and of course now one door that needs to enter under this framework is the climate change aspect, and I think we should work closely. The ambassador has spoken about the project. The number remains around 49 billion. And there are projects which have been completed. And hopefully by 2025, we would have a large share of the energy projects that were. But please remember, I'm just showing the pictures in front of you. We started with green development under the energy framework. The projects in Jimpi, Suki Kenari project, the Kaidiasam Solar Park, were all under the arrangements uh, of the MOU that was signed in the energy uh, uh, JWG. And from there, we have grown further. And now, again, the discussion is on, on alternate uh, sources of energy using indigenous sources, and of course, working on, on new solar projects. The infrastructure development, again, the overall agenda remained ar around having green development of CPEC, and the focus during the discussion, during articulation of PC1 was towards that. But now the focus as, as we see would be around railway. And I think in this, our concern should remain around green development. And of course, railway and Mazar Saab has a, has a major role to play in the, uh, in the project that we are working on. For me, uh, working in, uh, in the board of investment in KP, I think our concern would remain around as we move and transition from G to G towards B to B and working on new uh, technologies, logistics, hospitality, housing, tourism, our focus remain how to pre preserve the environment, how to have new technologies, build our capacity in that. And I would request the ambassador to actually support us, especially uh, smaller provinces in developing our not just our policy uh, making process, but also the overall uh, development structure. Again, in Gawadar, when we were working on the Gawadar master plan, I would just go straight to that. We focused on uh, the future scenarios that were to be developed and in our development goals, each industry, fishery, heavy industry, light industry, trade and logistics were, were made around midterm and long-term plans. And in all these plans, the green development was part of the agenda. Not so in the short term plans, but then again in the mid term and long term plan, this was part of the overall. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I would like to propose in terms of long term planning is to careful development of nine SCCs under the industrial framework and help mobilize resources needed to fill the gaps in telecommunication, education, agriculture, and maritime and, uh, sector. We also, uh, uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, need support for transfer of technology and capacity enhancement in low carbon technologies. I remember when we were working on, on, uh, on coal fire projects, we had these issues of uh, understanding our engineers were not uh, capable. So a lot of engineers, about 100 were sent to China and now that they're coming back, uh, the, the number and 85,000 that the ambassador just mentioned is growing as we speak, as the projects are being commissioned. We see a lot of uh, Pakistani engineers, workers, supporters working bo both in engagement and also in direct uh, work. We also need to invigorate the blue economy and coastal uh, uh, tourism because that has been a neglected part. And I think 
under the uh, maritime uh, uh, sector development, the maritime silk road, I think Pakistan needs to focus more under the uh, long term plan and work together to grow the over overall capacity. But please remember still as, as we have this seminar, significant innovation is still needed to transform the sustainable infrastructure into mainstream development goals. And I think Ambassador, uh, we need to, along with SDPI, we need to focus more towards bringing think tanks from your side and think tanks from Pakistan side, so that you know we can set up a short-term, long-term, mid-term plan, because this is more important then, and that reminds me, and I land on that, that reminds me of uh, Deng Xiaoping's quote, it does not matter whether the cat is black or white, as long as it catches the mouse. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Hassan Daud Batsa. I'll uh, take it over from Dr. Hina for moderating this. And uh, while we are waiting for uh, Professor Hassan Iqbal, sir, I request uh, Harun Sharif sir, for his keynote remarks, please. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. Ni uh, uh, Honorable, my brother, Excellency Nong Rong, Ambassador of China. Uh, Dr. Abid Kayum Suleri, Executive Director. Uh, Dr. Hassan Daud. Uh, <coughs> Honorable ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, started a little early in the morning. But this is a topic today what we are discussing. It does not only matter to our present, but it actually matters to future generation. A lot more, the foundation we set, because we are living in a post-COVID recovery period. Two words come. Dr. Suleri mentioned uh, uh, the seas of, and the challenges, but the word, the reality is at the moment that we are living in great uncertainty. At all levels, we don't know if any unfortunate pandemic might come back. We really don't know, as a matter of fact, both developed and developing countries, uh, perhaps for the first time in the near history, are facing similar challenges of fiscal consolidation. We basically have fiscal space eroding. We have slowed down of growth globally from 6.2% to almost 3.6% this year, and it might further go down. So Pakistan is not alone in this effort, and I just wanted to give this macro change uh, post-pandemic. We had a rapid V-shaped recovery in many countries, but now all of us are going through a consolidation period. And in a minute, I'll come how it links to what we are going to discuss today. So what does it mean for countries like Pakistan, China, and the partnership plans and projects? So that's, so in this period of uncertainty, where one thing is certain, that we need to work for the well-being of people, the quality of life, and the quality of our planet. And that is where the climate resilience becomes a priority for many countries. I have deliberately chosen the word climate resilience because we know what climate change uh, is going to do. We have spoken even in this seminar that what is needed to be done. But we need, I would go to some very practical suggestions that how Pakistan and China and other friends can jointly build the resilience to tackle the challenge. The danger is loud, clear, you know, and visible, but we need to build and stand up to it uh, and deal with it. And that's what I'm going to talk about. And particularly, where will the money come from? In the period of fiscal consolidation, when you're not getting enough taxes, countries like Pakistan cannot continue to borrow to finance development and resilience. 
where would the money come from? And that is a question which I would like to put for today's discussion, because resilience, while it needs technology transfer, while it needs knowledge, it also needs capacity to develop projects which can be resilient to climate change, but also you need financing at reasonable rate. Uh, as you know, a student of uh, economic developments, the interest rates are rising across the globe. So money is getting not only scarce, but it's getting expensive. Now the question is how to make it feasible for high impact transactions, which does not only improve the quality of Pakistan, China, Pakistan economic corridor, but gives the uh, you know direct impact on positive impact on the lives of the people. So with this backdrop, a couple of things come to my mind. Uh, there are different estimates for Pakistan's sustainable development goals. Uh, IMF study basically suggests that actually Pakistan needs $16 billion a year for next 10 years to actually meet the goals. So this is not going to happen, all of us know, but that is the kind of estimation. Out of that $16 billion, $2 to $3 billion are needed uh, for building the climate resilience. Now, where would that two to three billion dollars come from? And this is where I would like to uh, throw an idea. We speak about policies, we speak about government to government cooperation, but I think this is the time where private financial markets have to come into uh, this particular space because we cannot continue you know, taking soft loans or grants or investments at G2G level only. It is government, international institutions and private sector jointly to start working on a framework which can you know, deliver the results. Otherwise we will be doing a great disservice basically due to this infrastructure development, agriculture sector enhancement, urbanization, uh, energy projects, if you know, we do not build the parallel resilience and know how, how to deal with it. Now, a few thoughts on that. Uh, and in my 30, over 30 years experience of working this and 15, 16 other countries, I think there are three challenges which I would like you to think about. The money today, we got to think in a time when governments fiscal space is shrinking, the private capital looks for two, three things, which we need to work on. Private capital looks at a very strong governance structure that who will manage my money? This is extremely critical for Pakistan because our ministry structure does not give confidence to private markets to put money in the government sector. Let's be very honest. So we have developed public-private partnership structures. We have developed you know, non-banking financial company structure. Now, in order to con convert government initiatives into stronger governance structure, my first suggestion is that we pick up three, four top projects like our coal-based plants, perhaps, electric vehicles, you know, infrastructure, and put together a strong independent governance structure, not only to design interventions, but time-bound monitoring of delivery of that you know, output. Unfortunately, our governments and Pakistan's government, uh, it has become a lot about process. We are not looking at the tangible outcome. Pakistan did a wonderful job when we dealt with COVID under the NCOC structure. That's an example. Take it for account that a well-coordinated structure, which is insulated from day-to-day -day politics, which is insulated basically from policy shifts and given to the world-class engineers, financial experts, environmental experts who actually take, look, you know, take it for at least five years. And that will develop, you know, something of that angle. And I'm 100% sure if Pakistan takes the lead in putting a governance structure in place, 
people, our, our brothers in China, the sovereign wealth funds, the financial sector funds, the green silk route fund, they would be very interested to talk to them. Now, this structure is not necessarily taking grants and just investing. This structure should look at sustainable projects, which can give a return, a commercial return, actually. You know, like the electrical vehicle uh, sporting, you know, charging stations have a commercial return. So why, why do we bring government money into that? We need to bring in private sector in that space. Solar panels manufacturing, a joint venture. Now, my second point is that we need our industry to get into China and other countries' knowledge base and technology transfer base. And that can only be done through joint ventures so that our people raise the productivity level and competitiveness and get into joint ventures. Why don't we produce solar panels in Pakistan? Why don't we produce inverters in Pakistan? We are importing and all of you know that Pakistan does not have dollars. So we cannot continue importing these things and that gives a huge business opportunity in Pakistan, but through joint ventures where Pakistani industry raises the capacity. Now, where would that money come from to support that joint ventures? I would like to, uh, uh, I'll continue repeating to my brother Nong Rong that we actually need a financial institution like Park China Investment Company to put in half a billion dollars worth of money in these technology joint ventures, which will be done in private sector. And we should get cheaper products we should get high quality project products and there will be no burden on government's books of borrowing. So we need to look at, but the question is that Pakistan's investment to GDP ratio is 15%. Our competitors ratio is almost 30%. And the third obviously is foreign direct investment in this sector, which we desperately need. Uh, but I'm afraid that uh, has macro uh, uh, changes, structural changes are required to attract that investment. But the money, let me tell you, is available in China and the region. I repeat, the money, the liquidity is available. It is looking for a house to go. Now that project job sources multilateral banks uh, private capital which will excite people that here is a product which can give a return which is people friendly which will build climate resilience pakistan currently lacks that capability and I would like to make a little announcement here that I have been advising the UN Secretary General's team on that. And here in UNDP has developed a small unit which will help government convert their projects into uh, investor information sheets, which can be taken to roadshows where people can take interest into that. Now in closing, what I see is that there is a change of mindset needed. Uh, our state's mindset for years have been, we have been financing development uh, through concessional loans or taxpayers' money. I think both are not feasible in future, near future. We, I don't need to go into that Pakistan has no fiscal space left out of the taxpayers' money. In terms of concessional financing, I see pressures on concessional financing. Uh, globally because the demand is rising. So what we need to very carefully look at is that how we come up with competitive propositions. I will put three to four propositions on table before I close my uh, discussion. Uh, first of all, as I said, that we actually need to invest in sporting infrastructure for electrical vehicles. And we need to basically put money behind that. Alternate energy, both solar, wind, and small hydro. 
we need very dedicated long term feasible financing and technical expertise available for that i'm sorry state cannot do it it's not state's job and state cannot do it they have to mobilize through expertise that is an area for climate resilience which will bring down the carbon emissions agriculture modern agriculture because all these floodings and everything is hitting our lands we need technology to deal with it and that is where at the moment our farming is all informal we need to uh, please remember we need to change the governance and management structure which attracts partners to work with them directly which gives certainty honestly speaking if i am an investor i have been part of the government uh, in my one year <clears throat> as chairman boi i had four federal secretaries changed now if you are an investor would you like to work with an institution where faces change every four months i'll be very open here so government it will take time to bring that certainty but we need to work on these sectors together not only to make cpec more friendly my third intervention is excellency if we pick up one economic zone out of the plan and make it world class on best practices a green economic zone that will give a signal for instance you know in many countries i was in uk just 10 days back now in central london you cannot bring in cars which run on petrol you can only bring hybrid or electric vehicles if we have electric transportation trucks coming going there we have solar plants giving energy that will be you know uh, an intervention people would take us far more seriously and investors will come in so i have given examples of interventions which will build pakistan's climate resilience but we need to raise at least 1 billion dollars in this fiscal year to deal with it at a price which makes sense we need to come up with projects which can sustain itself at least return that capital if not give lots of profit so that you know start to otherwise government in an imf program their hands are tied they cannot really do that and this is a topic we have been debating for years i was recalling this morning in 1990 25 years back i have my german colleague sitting here uh, i was invited by kfw and bmz to berlin to speak about greening the financial sector so we have been talking about it i would say it is the time to convert the talk into transactions and that conversion of transaction is the job of experts not necessarily the job of politicians or even generalist bureaucrats so we need to create that space to do that and i'll be very happy to lend any advice or partnership to stpi i'm already you know very frequently talking to my chinese friends but others that how to do transactions to demonstrate to the market that we are serious about climate change and this is what we have done thank you very much the uh, comprehensive remarks and uh, four very clear interventions and certainly i think uh, the time now requires that we should convert this thinking into transaction as rightly said Uh, to continue on the same note may i invite mr n a zubairi sir to senior advisor china three gorges south asia investment limited good morning and assalam alaikum excellent mr nong Wrong. Chinese ambassador, Honorable Harun Sharif Sir, Abid Soleria Sir, Doctor Hassan Sahab Sir, ladies and gentlemen, it is really indeed a great honor for me to be here in such a limited and august gathering. Today, I will be delivering a presentation on the achievements and the problems of the power sector under CPEC. I'll be talking on behalf of Mr. Jengjun, 
who is the chairman of all Pakistan Chinese Enterprises Association. He is the chief representative of CTG. He is also a CEO of Kohala Hydro Project and he is a deputy CEO of CTG. So please, next slide. <clears throat> it is a very brief presentation. I'll be talking about on the achievements of the CPEC power projects. Then I will discuss some implications of the return on equity, the problems faced by the CPEC projects, because this is very important. We are talking about the new investment investments, but first of all, we should try to rectify what are, what are the problems which the CPEC these projects are facing. I'll be talking about the demands of the power companies under the CPEC and what will be the future outlook of Pakistan power. In the end, I will try to conclude the presentation with some concluding remarks also. Next, please. Next, please. Now, CPEC power projects are basically driving Pakistan economic growth and have created thousands of job opportunities to the people of Pakistan, have provided multiple and multi pronged social economic development in Pakistan. As a result of CPEC project, macroeconomic conditions have started improving. Its economy is maintaining the momentum and rapid growth. Prior to CPEC, everybody knows that before 2014, even in Islamabad, there was a load shedding for eight hours. In rural area, there was a load shedding of about more than 20 hours. CPEC power project helped us in eliminating power shortages in Pakistan in a very, very short time. Presently, about 6,000 megawatts of power capacity has already put in operation, which includes 440 megawatts of renewable energy projects. Our flagship project is 720 megawatts. This base, which is a hydropower project, crowd hydropower. 400 megawatts solar power projects are there, which is already uh, commissioned. 300 megawatts of wind power projects. These are the projects which have been commissioned. Now, in the national grid, total energy generation is 130 billion kilowatt annually. CPEC projects are generating around 35.86 gigawatt of our energy, which means that one fourth of energy is coming from CPEC projects. Very reliably and stable power is coming from the CPEC projects. Next, please. Since 2014, total investment made by Chinese projects have reached nine, more than $19 billion with a total installed capacity of about 13,000 megawatts. The average tariff, everybody talks about, there's a lot of myths of section in Pakistan. OP private power policy, which means that these investors have taken the risk of financing. They have taken the risk of construction. They have taken the risk of completion and they have taken the risk of operation and maintenance. So all risk these CPIC projects have taken by themselves. They are basically responsible for arranging financing. And it is a total direct investment to Pakistan. Next is another important achievement of the CPAC power projects is uh, in Pakistan, the transmission line system is in a mess. Chinese state, basically grid company has constructed Matiari Lahore 600 kV HV DC line under CPEC. The project has just recently been completed. It will have a, it has a capacity of 4,000 megawatts and losses is only 44%. You see in Pakistan at the moment in transmission line losses, the losses are more than 20% for transmission line only. And this is the first DC transmission line which has been constructed under CPEC. The other thing is that this line has been completed well in time. You have seen the performance of NTDC in Pakistan. Every transmission line is delayed. Next, please. 
Now, CFEC power projects are playing a role in the transfer of technology and the development in Pakistan, skill development in Pakistan. The coal based CPEC projects are all supercritical technology, which means there is no SOX and NOX emitted from these projects. These are rather clean projects. When these projects were being constructed, there was no skilled manpower was available in Pakistan. The management of these Chinese companies picked the brightest students from the NED University and the NUST University. These are the reputable, reputable industry, industry, uh, universities of Pakistan. These dynamic young engineers were trained in China so that they can handle these projects when these projects are commissioned to cater for the ten technical requirement of the Karod. This Karod 700 megawatt project is very close to Islamabad. Now, this Karod company basically they did is that company selected students from the local area where the project is located. They provided a scholarship program, four year scholarship program for engineering studies. This was a split program. Half of the course was done in pa Pakistan and half of the course was done in China. And it was a fully funded scholarship for these students. The students who have qualified, the company has hired them. Now in this Karod project, at the moment, there are around 100 people who are operating the project out of the 70% are local. So it is a big boost to the local company. Another important thing is that CPEC project is providing big relief on short term and long term to Pakistan. The tariff for these projects will be reduced after 10 to 12 years drastically because the debt servicing has been paid. For hydro projects, tariff will be only 4 cents after 10 years, after the debt servicing. These hydro projects under, under uh, hydro for our power project under CPEC will be transferred to government of Pakistan at a free of cost, this Karot project, you're talking about the clean and green energy, this Karot project, its cost is $1.4 billion and government has not invested a single penny on it and it will be transferred to government of Pakistan free of cost after 30 years of operation. Next, please. Now, this is a list of projects which have already been commissioned. 6,000 megawatts of hydro power projects, oh, after, sorry, sorry 6,000 megawatts of projects have been commissioned under CPEC. These projects involve coal-based projects, both imported and local. These projects are based on uh, wind, solar, and hydro also. So most of the project, if you see that co uh, hydro, wind, and solar are renewable energy-based projects. Every project, let me tell you, have a success story. Everybody talks about the success story of the Sahiwal. It was constructed in a very short duration and other things. Let me give you a few points on Karot because this is a project, is a clean uh, uh, and green energy project, hydropower project, and it has just been commissioned. This project during construction has provided about 10.9 billion rupees in the form of duties and taxes to the federal government and the provincial government. This project after commissioning will be provided, will be providing around 1.2 billion rupees in terms of water use charge to the to a Punjab and AJK because this project is located in Punjab and, and also AJK. Another important thing during construction, this has provided the job opportunities for 5,000 locals. And now the project is operating. I have earlier told there are around 100 people and 70% people are local. Another important thing, again, this project after successful commissioning will be transferred to government of Punjab. Another important thing that company has done a tremendous amount of work under community investment plan and under social CSR. They have constructed a lot many hospitals, education, uh, uh, education institution. They have constructed a polytechnic institution is being constructed at Karot. They have constructed uh, basically a trauma center at, uh, at uh, Kahuta. A lot, uh, they have provided uh, basically drinking water facilities for the local. They have constructed infrastructure, uh, basically facilities to the local. They have spent an amount of more than 655 mil million rupees on this. So a lot of social activity has been done by the project. And the important thing is that in public sector, people are not conscious about the environment. 
this project is being funded by IFC also. So best international practices and environmental laws have been followed. This is the only project which has carried out a detailed biodiversity management plan. And this biodiversity management plan is a unique plan in Pakistan for any hydro project. It is a role model for this implementation of the biodiversity management, the consultants and we hire with the support of the provincial government, not only this plan was not only implemented during construction, it is, will be implement, it is being implemented throughout the operation also. So this is just a few success story about this Karod project. If you talk, I can talk on every project. Every project has a tremendous amount of success story. Next, please. <clears throat> now these 7,000 megawatts of projects are under construction. Most of the project, around 4,000 megawatts of projects in this portfolio are hidden. Flagship project of China Three Gorges is Kohala, 1124 megawatt project. Then there is a Suki Kanari project. Then there is Azad Patan project. So Hydels are obviously renewable projects and it has a lot of multiple benefits to local community, to the government of Pakistan. So portfolio consists of a good number of hydropower projects, solar power projects, wind power projects. Next, please. Now, some issues. Why we have highlighted, my, my CEO, Mr. Zheng Yun, wanted that we should highlight. Because if existing Chinese companies are facing some problems and they want to invest in new projects, but how they can invest when they are, they are facing some problems. So those problems needs to be attended. That is an issue. Next, please. Now for return and equity, you know that Pakistan right from, I think 47 is interested in developing power projects and coal. We have not been successful in developing one megawatt of coal fire power project up till 2014. In 2013, NEPRA took an initiative. They announced an upfront tariff for coal fired power project, but not a single investor came because nobody knew the dynamics of the coal, what type of a risk coal is involved. Because there is a long lead time, it is very difficult to arrange financing. You go to ADB, you go, go to IFC, you go to any multinational, nobody is willing to provide financing and coal. So in 1994, NEPRA revised this upfront tariff. And according to that, the return on equity for imported coal projects was about 25%. As the return on equity was increased to 25%, so some Chinese company showed the interest. By end 2017, Coal fire pro projects under CPEC were successfully commissioned. Sahiwal power project is in operation for five, last five years. Port Kasim coal fired power project is operational for the last four years. China hub power project is operational for the last three, five, three point five years. Since 2018, several Chinese power project companies in Pakistan are facing some delays in the payments from CPPAG. Next, please. <clears throat> now, delay due to the due to delays in the payments from CPPAG, huge amount of arrears, and a large depreciation of Pakistan rupee. Several Chinese coal power project companies are suffering huge financial losses. So far, shareholders of Chinese companies, coal-fired power projects have not yet received any dividends. Can you think that this pro these projects have a lead time, first of all, of three to four years, more than rather four years? And for the last five years, they have not been given any single dividend because they are in severe financial crisis. Shareholders of major power companies have injected millions of dollars to keep each project in operation because they have to buy the coal. Since 2021, most of the coal fire projects have generated power, but have not been paid by CP CPPG. As a result, these companies are incurring financial losses. This has seriously affected the ability of power companies to pay to the lenders and to the o &M contractors. Next, please. Now, there is some issues for the hydro and wind power projects also. GOP has announced a policy 
in the policy, there is a return on equity of around 17% for hydros, hydro, solar, and wind power projects. However, in fact, the return on equity is 15%. The circular debt situation in Pakistan is very serious. Chinese Three Gorges Group first wind power project was commissioned in 2014 and is in operations for the last eight years and has not been paid any dividend to date. Due to the delays in the payment of CBBAG, huge amount of areas, large depreciation of Pakistan rupees, return on Chinese investors is less than 10%, which can be regarded as 0%. Headquarters of nearly all Chinese companies expected a good dividend because they have invested the money. It is a commercial deal. However, as Chinese companies could not pay dividend, so they are not very enthusiastic about new investments in Pakistan. Next, please. Problems faced by CPEC investors now. Next, please. Now, due to delays in the payments of CPPAG, huge amount of areas and large depreciation of Pakistan rupee, very little or no dividend has been paid by Chinese investors for a long time. As a result, the headquarters of all Chinese companies are concerned on their substantial investment in Pakistan. Due to large amount of ADR's accelerated depreciation, uh, the companies may face financial risk in future, which will greatly dampen the enthusiasm of the Chinese investors. Due to large amount of ADR's unavailability of foreign exchange, the purchase of imported coal for three coal power projects are facing serious risks. CPPAG is of the view that as CPEC coal-fired power projects are not available for dispatch, hence they deduct capacity payments. Disregarding that real reason of unavailability of coal is due to the delay in the payments by the CPPG. The project have already been achieved COD. The, for, for the projects which have, like Karot, which have achieved the COD, NEPRA needs to approve the COD tariff as soon as possible and provide relief to the company so that relative relevant project companies to meet OM cost. Why I am saying this? Now, this for, for example, I quote Karot project. Karot was basically signed the EPC contract in 2017 when one US dollar was 100 rupees. Now, if we submit a tariff based on one US dollar is 100, the project is not viable. So we want NEPRA should adjust it as of today's dollar. Next, please. Demands very quickly. Next, please. There are CPBG to immediately establish the receiving uh, accounts uh, in accordance with the signed CPEC agreements revolving account this is according to the cpec agreement in cpec agreement it has been envisaged that uh, cppa will you know, uh, open the revolving current account so that payments can be made directly the other demand is that foreign currency be provided in a timely manner because if foreign currency is not provided how we can pay for the coal how we can pay for the investor uh, for OM cost the relevant authorities to implement the commitment of honorable prime minister of pakistan of not deducting the capacity payment which they are deducting. NEPRA to approve COD tariffs for the projects which have achieved COD as soon as possible and to grant interim relief in the timely manner. Next, please. Future outlook. The next, please. The future outlook has very well been enshrined in the IGCEP. This IGCEP is Indicative Generation Capacity Expansion Plan. This is the requirement of legal requirement according to the grid code. The NTDC has prepared the uh, basically uh, IGSAP and IGSAP clearly identified by, by 2030, the total basically generation capacity requirement will be 61,000 megawatts. It clearly, clearly states that there are some obsolete projects in Pakistan that should be required with a capacity of about 6,500 megawatts. And if you see the IGSAP, IGSAP envisages about 8,000 megawatts of project should be based on solar, 500 megawatts of project should be based on wind, 749 megawatt of projects should be based on bagas. So IGCEP is basically tilted towards the renewable energy projects. The IGCEP says that future projects should be based on renewable energy projects. The Chinese companies are basically very anxious to invest in these project in these projects, but they are facing some problems. Those problems need to be addressed because if we don't get the payment from CPBG, why one should make investments? 
and they have to pay to the lenders. They are basically answerable to the lenders. They are answerable to the O&M contractor. O&M contractor cannot operate the project until and unless they get money. Next, please. So this is the projects, which uh, uh, summary of expected installed projects. And this is the basically details of the uh, projects, which is in, uh, given in the IGSAP. Next, please. Now concluding the maps. Next, please. From the perspective of power supply and demand, Pakistan needs to replace about 6,500 megawatts of installed coal power projects. Now there are two renewable energy projects, which are Kohala and Azad Patan. Now for this, Sinosure has not yet issued LOI, which is the requirement for arranging the financing for these projects. Sinosure insurance is very conservative on whether to invest in CPEC projects in Pakistan or whether existing projects under CPEC are facing serious problems. Now, we sincerely hope that Pakistan's side would make serious efforts to resolve the above issues urgently for the already installed and for future CPEC projects. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us in this conference. Just I would like to brief you that I am basically representing China Three Gorges. My CEO, who is basically Jiang Jun, he is also the chairman of all Pakistan uh, Enterprises Association, and he is also CEO of Kohala Project. He is also deputy CEO of CSIL. He is abroad. He asked me to give a presentation. What I have talked today in my presentation is that I've talked about the achievements of the power project. I have informed the audience that CPEC projects are unique projects in Pakistan. All financing risk has been taken by CPEC projects. All construction risk has been taken by CPEC projects. All operation risk has been taken by CPEC projects. They have taken the completion project and all projects have been completed well in time. Every project has done a tremendous amount of CIP activities and CSR activities for the benefit of the locals. The other thing is that for hydro projects, these projects will be transferred to government of Punjab of provinces free of cost. Even when the projects are being constructed, they have injected a lot of money in the form of duties and taxes. I put it the example of the Karot. Karot had paid in basically amount of 10.5, 10.9 billion rupees in the form of duties and taxes to the government of Pakistan during construction. The project has a point. These CPEC projects have provided a lot of job opportunities to the locals. I have highlighted that we have basically fully funded scholarship provided, road project provided, and the students which have got the degree, they have been hired by the uh, basically company. But I have also highlighted some problems. The main problem I can tell you that I have been asked by my sponsors to highlight is that difficulty in getting the payments from the CPP. This is the most important issue because we can't get the payments from CPPG, how we can pay to the lenders, how we can pay to the ONM contractors. Another important thing we want really, we want to uh, do projects like solar, wind, hydros, but for hydros, we have already completed Karot project. Karot project is a success story in Pakistan. You, I can tell you, I can speak for hours really, to my heart, I believe it is a success because this project, you can think that this project, according to the IGSAP, was to be commissioned June 2023. We have completed the project in June 2022, 20, uh, this year. One year ahead, all hydel projects in public sector are always delayed. And all the world-class quality equipment is there. During testing and commissioning, there's a long list of tests which are to be required. During the, every test was cleared in one go. So this project has a tremendous amount of success story. We want to do Pohala, but for Pohala, there is the issue of Sinosure insurance. Once we get the LOI for Sinosure, only then we get financing. So we are requesting government of Pakistan to support us in getting the LOI from Sinosure. If Sinosure insurance available, we are committed to do Pohala. We are committed to do Mahal. We are committed to do more hydro projects because China Three Gorges is a world leader in hydropower projects. They have basically more than 1,40,000 megawatts hydro projects, not only in 
China, but 40 different countries. We have proved our success story in Pakistan by developing first the road hydropower project. So this issue we have tabled. Thank you very much. Thank you, Uzubairi sir. Uh, let me uh, formally welcome Professor Asenik Balsab, Minister for Planning. Thank you, sir, for joining us. So we've had uh, uh, four very well-informed presentations uh, today by Uzubairi sir, you just heard, but also by uh, Excellency the Ambassador of China, Mr. Non Rong, uh, Dr. Hassan Daud Bhatt sahab, uh, Mr. Harun Sharif sahab, and remarks by Dr. Abid Suleri. And I think in line with the subject, uh, which today invites discussion on green development uh, under CPEC, uh, we have held interventions which uh, include uh, projects uh, in green and, uh, green and clean energy space in line with the 14th five-year plan of China, which in fact informs that the proportion of green energy projects is on the increase globally. Uh, we've also uh, discussed how uh, in an environment of uh, erosion of fiscal space, uh, both public and private investment can be created, including opportunities for public-private partnerships. And we've also discussed uh, that uh, while investment is there, institutional arrangements to receive, attract, and retain long-term inflows in these projects uh, would be uh, critical. Uh, we would now like to hear from you, sir. And I think without ado, I'll uh, hand over to you. Thank you, sir. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Honorable Ambassador of China, Excellency, Mr. Don Dong, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, CPAC is a success story for Pakistan, and it is indeed a game changer. Uh, I have many, uh, you know, diplomats here. I would like to speak in English, but because of the media, I think we have a much bigger audience outside. So I will try to speak both in Urdu and English so that we can also communicate with the audience outside this hall. CPAC Pakistan ki tarikh mein ek sangye meal ki hasiyat rakhta hai. Aur mujhe is baat pe bhoat fakar hai. Ke meri tis saal ki siyasi zindagi mein. Agar koi mere liye turra imtiaz hai. To wo ye hai ke wazir azam Nawaz Sharif ne 2013 mein. Jab CPAC ke moedhe par China mein tastakhat huye. To is par amal dramat ke liye mujhe zimedari di. اور دوہزار تیرہ اور اٹھارہ کے درمیان ہم نے تقریباً انتیس ارب ڈالر کی سرمایہ کاری کو ممکن کر کے دنیا کو دنگ کر دیا لوگوں کا خیال تھا کہ یہ معایدہ صرف کاغذوں میں رہے گا اور شاید پاکستان میں اتنی صلاحیت نہیں ہوگی کہ وہ اس معایدے کو حقیقت میں ڈھال سکے لیکن چین کی قیادت پریزیڈنٹ شی پریمیر لی کی کمیٹمنٹ اور پاکستان کی حکومت کی پرائی منسٹر نواز شریف کی قیادت میں کمیٹمنٹ نے تمام رکاوٹوں کو عبور کر کے مختصر ترین مدت میں اس منصوبے کو کامیابی سے ہم کنار کر کے ملک کے لیے ترقی کی وہ بنیاد رکھی جو آنے والے عشروں میں بھی فور ڈیکٹس ٹو کم ہمارے لیے ایک مضبوط دھانچہ فرام کرے دوزار تیرہ میں جب سی پیک پہ ہم نے کام شروع کیا تو اس وقت پاکستان کی صورتحال یہ تھی کہ سولہ اٹھارہ گھنٹے بجلی نہیں تھی پاور شارٹیجز انتہا پہ تھے ہر روز ایک خودکش بمبار کسی علاقے میں پڑتا تھا اور درجنوں لوگوں کو اپنے ساتھ لے جاتا تھا اور پوری دنیا میں پاکستان کو ایک سیکیورٹی تھریٹ کی حیثیت سے سمجھتے ہوئے کوئی غیر ملکی پاکستان سفر کرنے کے لیے تیار نہیں تھا ان حالات کے اندر حکومت پاکستان نے انرجی پالیسی کا اعلان کیا کہ ہم 
اپنے لوگوں کو بجلی فراہم کرنے کے لیے سرمایہ کاری چاہتے ہیں بیرون ملک سے کوئی سرمایہ کار تو آنا دور کی بات ہے کوئی پاکستانی سرمایہ کار بھی اس انرجی پالیسی کے تحت سرمایہ کاری کرنے کے لیے تیار نہیں اور ان حالات میں چین کی قیادت اور چین نے پاکستان کے ساتھ دوستی کا حق ادا کرتے ہوئے اپنے سرمایہ کاروں کو اشارہ کیا کہ دنیا پاکستان کو پر خطر ڈیسٹینیشن دیکھے لیکن ہم پاکستان کو ایک بھائی ہونے کی حیثیت سے ان خطروں سے بالا تر دیکھتے ہیں اور آپ جا کے پاکستان میں انویسٹمنٹ کریں اور پھر اپریل ٹوینٹی فورٹین میں جب پریزیڈنٹ شی نے تاریخی وزٹ کیا پاکستان کا تو فورٹی سکس بلین ڈالرز کے معاہدوں پہ دستخط ہوئے اور وال اسٹریٹ جرنل پہ صفے اول پہ پہلے صفے پہ جب یہ خبر شائع ہوئی کہ چین پاکستان میں چھیالیس ارب ڈالر کی سرمایہ کاری کر رہا ہے تو اس نے دنیا کے سامنے پاکستان کے تشخص کو بدل دیا وہ ملک جسے دنیا ایک سیکیورٹی کے زاویے سے دیکھتی تھی ایک دم دنیا نے زوم بدلا اور اس ملک کو ایک انویسٹمنٹ ڈیسٹینیشن کی صورت میں دیکھنا شروع کر دیا چین کا سب سے بڑا پاکستان کے ساتھ دوستی کہا کیا تھا کہ اس مشکل وقت میں جب کوئی پاکستان سفر کرنے کے لیے تیار نہیں تھا انہوں نے دنیا کے سامنے ہاتھ کھڑا کر کے کہا کہ ہم فورٹی سکس بلین ڈالر پاکستان میں انویسٹ کرنے کے لیے تیار ہیں اور پاکستان ہمارے نزدیک ایک سیف ڈیسٹینیشن اور نتیجتا اربوں ڈالر کی سرمایہ کاری آئی اور اس سے پاکستان نے اپنے توانائی کے بحران کو انرجی ڈیفیشنسی سے انرجی سیلف سفیشنسی کا سفر ممکن کیا اسی طرح سی پیک نے ہمیں ماڈرن انفراسٹرکچر بنانے میں مدد دی چاہے وہ ملتان سکر موٹر وے ہے چاہے وہ حویلیاں ایپٹ آباد سے تھا کوٹ تک کی ایکسپریس وے ہے جس نے شمالی علاقہ جات کو کھولا چاہے وہ گوادر پورٹ کے اندر انفراسٹرکچر بنانے میں ہماری مدد ہے سی پیک نے پاکستان کی گروتھ کے جو دو بوٹل نیکس تھے توانائی اور انفراسٹرکچر ان دونوں کو پلگ کرنے میں ہماری بے انتہا قیمتی مدد کی جس کے لیے ہم چین کی حکومت کے شکر گزار بھی ہیں اور سمجھتے ہیں کہ انہوں نے حقیقتا اگر پاکستان کو آئرن بردر کہا تو عمل کے ذریعے پاکستان کو پاکستان کے آئرن بردر ہونے کا حق ادا کیا ان تمام منصوبوں کی منظوری میں تکمیل میں جو ان منصوبوں کا ماحول پہ اثر ہے اس کو لازمن ایک کرائیٹیریے کے طور پہ شامل کیا گیا اور کسی منصوبے کو انوائرمنٹل پروٹیکشن ایجنسی کی کلیئرنس کے بغیر وزارت منصوبہ بندی نے گو اہڈ نہیں دیا ہم نے جو کوئلے کے منصوبے بنائے اس میں سپر کریٹیکل ٹیکنالوجی کو ترجیح دی گئی جو کہ محفوظ ٹیکنالوجی ہے کوئلے سے ایندھن بنانے کے لیے اور ماحولیاتی آلودگی پیدا نہیں کرتی اسی طرح ہائیڈل پروجیکٹس کے اوپر آپ نے دیکھا کہ بہترین بین الاقوامی معیار کے مطابق اس کو شروع کیا گیا اور ان پہ تکمیل کے ذریعے ہمیں ہائیڈل ریسورسز کو ٹیپ کرنے میں مدد ملی اسی طرح رینیوبل انرجیز کے اندر پاکستان میں کوئی نو ہاؤ نہیں تھا اور سولر پارک بھاول پور میں سی پیک کے ذریعے شروع کیا گیا جس میں تین سو میگا واٹ لگ چکی ہے اور اسی طرح تقریباً ڈھائی سو سے تین سو میگا واٹ ونڈ انرجی کے منصوبے سی پیک کے تحت لگے تو سی پیک نے رینیوبل انرجی کے اندر بھی پاکستان کے اندر ایک نیا کلسٹر پیدا کیا جس سے ہمارے انجینئرز کو ہماری مقامی صنعت کو 
ہمارے لوگوں کو ان شعبوں کے اندر جانکاری حاصل ہوئی اور جو لوگ یہ کہتے ہیں کہ سی پیک نے پاکستان پہ قرضوں کا بوجھ ڈالا یہ اتنا بڑا جھوٹ ہے کہ جس کی کوئی میں تو یہ کہوں گا یہ اتنا بڑا ہی جھوٹ ہے جتنا بڑا ہم پہ ماضی میں الزامات لگا کے جیلوں میں ڈالا جاتا تھا یعنی کہ توانائی کے تمام منصوبے جو چین نے پاکستان میں لگائے ان میں ایک ڈالر کا قرضہ پاکستانی حکومت نے نہیں لیا تمام کے تمام منصوبے آئی پی پی موڈ میں انویسٹمنٹ موڈ کے اندر لگے اور جو انفراسٹرکچر کے منصوبے لگائے گئے وہ دنیا کے سستے ترین نرخوں کے اوپر پاکستان کو بیس سے پچیس سال کے لیے واپسی کی شرائط کے اوپر فائنینسنگ دی گئی جو کہ آج بھی دنیا کا کوئی ملک پاکستان کو ان شرائط پہ فائنینسنگ دینے کے لیے میں نہیں سمجھتا مادہ ہو سکتا ہے ماں سبائے چین کے تو لہذا یہ کہنا کہ چین نے کسی بھی لحاظ سے ان منصوبوں نے پاکستان پہ قرضوں کا بوجھ ڈالا ہے یہ وہ پروپیگنڈا ہے جو دشمنوں نے سی پیک کو ناکام کرنے کے لیے کیا ہے دراصل سی پیک کے تمام منصوبے پاکستان کو وہ فائنینسنگ فراہم کرتے ہیں جو پاکستان کی معیشت کے لیے آکسیجن ثابت ہوئی تھر کے اندر ہمارے پاس ستر سال سے کوئلے کا اتنا بڑا ڈپوزٹ تھا جو ایران اور سعودی عرب کی انرجی تیل کی انرجی کے ایکولنٹ ہے تیل جو سعودی عرب اور ایران میں جس کے ذخائر ہیں ان کی توانائی کے برابر ان کی جو انرجی کوفیشنٹ ہے اس کے برابر ہمارے پاس کوئلے کے ذخائر ہیں تھر کے اندر جو ستر سال سے دفن تھے اور انہیں کوئی بروے کار نہیں لا سکا تھا کیونکہ نہ ٹیکنالوجی آ رہی تھی نہ اس کے لیے فائنینسنگ تھی سی پیک نے پاکستان کو وہ ٹیکنالوجی اور وہ فائنینسنگ دی کہ آج تھر سے ہم سستی ترین بجلی اپنے وسائل کے ساتھ پیدا کر رہے ہیں اور اس ذخیرے کو جو چار سو سال کے لیے ہمیں توانائی فراہم کر سکتا ہے اسے بروے کار لانے میں کامیاب ہوئے ہیں اسی طرح سی پیک کی جو اگلی منزل تھی وہ یہ تھی کہ اس انفراسٹرکچر کے بعد ہم نے نو اکنامک زون تیار کرنے تھے بیس سو بیس تک جس میں چین کی انڈسٹری نے ری لوکیٹ کرنا تھا چین کے اندر لیبر کاسٹ بڑھ چکی ہے اور اب تقریباً آٹھ کروڑ سے زیادہ جابز چین سے ری لوکیٹ ہو رہی ہیں ویتنام میں کمبوڈیا میں لاؤس میں ایتھوپیا میں بنگلہ دیش میں ہر اس ملک میں جہاں لیبر کاسٹ کم ہے تو پاکستان اس کوریڈور کی حیثیت میں بہترین گزرگا تھا گلوبل سپلائی چین کے راستے میں کہ جہاں وہ انڈسٹری ری لوکیٹ ہو سکے تو اس کے لیے ہم نے دوزار سترہ میں نو اکنومک زون سپیشل اکنومک زون کا انتخاب کیا جن کو بیس سو بیس تک تیار کر کے 2020-2025 پانچ سال اب ہم نے انڈسٹریل کوپریشن پر کام کرنا تھا آپ اندازہ کیجئے کہ آج بیس سو بائیس میں گزشتہ چار سالوں میں ہم ایک اکنومک زون بھی تیار نہیں کر سکے ان نو میں سے پانچ کے اوپر کام ہی نہیں شروع کیا گیا اب اس میں تو چین کا قصور نہیں ہے کہ اگر وہ سرمایہ کاری جو ان اکنومک زونز میں آنے کے لیے تیار تھی اگر آج وہ کسی اور ملک کی طرف چلی گئی ہے تو یہ ہماری سستی کی بدولت ہوا ہے کہ ہم نے گزشتہ چار سالوں میں سی پیک کو کولڈ سٹوریج کے اندر ڈال دیا اور وہ کام نہیں کیا کہ جو ہمیں اپنے حصے کا کام کرنا تھا کیونکہ بزنس ٹو بزنس ریلیشنشپ کے اندر آپ سرمایہ کو روک نہیں سکتے بزنس ٹو بزنس انویسمنٹ کے اندر آپ کو بین الاقوامی میار کی مسابقت پیدا کرنی پڑتی ہے اور آپ کو وہ انیبلنگ انوائرمنٹ پیدا کرنی پڑتی ہے جس میں کہ انٹرنیشنل بزنس والا جو ہے وہ دوسرے ممالک کے مقابلے میں آپ کو زیادہ پرکشش دیکھے اور اگر آپ سالوں سال ڈیلے کے ساتھ چلیں گے 
تو انٹرنیشنل انویسٹمنٹس تو شاید ہفتوں کا انتظار نہیں کرتی سالوں کا انتظار تو بہت مشکل ہے لیکن جب سے یہ حکومت آئی ہے ہم نے دوبارہ سی پیک کو توجہ دے کر فاسٹ ٹریک کرنے کی کوشش کی ہے پرائم منسٹر دو دفعہ خود گوادر گئے ہیں میں تین دفعہ گوادر جا چکا ہوں چائنیز کمپنیز کے ساتھ ہم مل کر کوشش کر رہے ہیں کہ ان کے مسائل کو حل کریں اور جو اس وقت مسئلے کا ذکر کیا گیا ہے وہ ہماری معیشت کی وجہ سے جو ڈپ آیا ہے کچھ مشکلات کا سامنا ہے لیکن میں یہ بات ضرور کہنا چاہتا ہوں کہ الحمدللہ ہم اس ریڈ یہ زون سے معیشت کو اب نکالنے میں کامیاب ہو رہے ہیں دن بہ دن اب ہم ایک بحالی کی طرف چل رہے ہیں آج سے تین مہینے پہلے شرطیں لگ رہی تھیں کہ پاکستان سری لنکا کتنے دنوں میں بنے گا جو بکرات ہیں اور سکرات ہیں وہ میڈیا پر اور بین الاقوامی چینلز پہ بیٹھ کے یہ شرائط لگا رہے تھے شرطیں لگا رہے تھے کہ پاکستان سری لنکا کتنے دنوں میں بنے گا یا ہفتوں میں بنے گا آج تین مہینے کے بعد الحمدللہ کوئی ایسا اینالسٹ نہیں ہے جو پاکستان کے سری لنکا بننے کی پیشن گوئی کر رہا ہم نے پاکستان کو ریٹریو کر لیا ہے اس سچویشن سے الحمد اور اب ہم دوبارہ ایک بحالی کی طرف چل پڑے ہیں تو جو جو یہ بحالی کا عمل ہوگا اور ہم مستحکم ہوں گے تو انشاءاللہ تعالی یہ جو ری پیمنٹس کے اندر تھوڑا ڈیلے ہے یہ بھی بر وقت ہوگا اور اس سے مجھے یقین ہے کہ ہمارے چائنیز جو پارٹنرز ہیں ان کی شکایات کا ہم ازالہ کرنے میں کامیاب ہو جائیں گے انوائرمنٹ اور کلائمیٹ چینج ایک بہت اہم شعبہ ہے میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ آج کے دور میں ہم سب اس کے نتائج دیکھ رہے ہیں پاکستان وہ ملک ہے کہ جس کا کاربن فٹ پرنٹ دنیا میں کم ترین ہے لیکن کلائمیٹ چینج کے متاثرین میں وی آر ان دا ٹاپ فائیو کنٹریز آف دا ورلڈ تو ہم دنیا کی غیر ذمہ دار ترقی کی قیمت ادا کر رہے ہیں اس کے لیے ضروری ہے کہ ہم اپنے ملک کے اندر بھی اب ایسا انفراسٹرکچر بنائیں ایسی تیاری کریں جس سے ماحولی ماحولیاتی جو تبدیلیاں آ رہی ہیں ان کا ہم بہتر مقابلہ کر سکیں جتنے ہمارے پروجیکٹس ہیں ان سے ہم کم سے کم ماحول پہ منفی اثرات کو یقینی بنائیں اور ایسے منصوبوں کو ترویج دیں جن سے کہ کلین انرجی اور گرین اکانومی کا تصور آگے بڑھ سکے اور خاص طور پہ جہاں ہماری یہ ترجیح ہے میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ چین کی قیادت نے بھی اس گلوبل چیلنج کو محسوس کرتے ہوئے اسے اپنی قومی اور عالمی ترجیح بنایا ہے پریزیڈنٹ شی کے دو خطاب میرے سامنے ہیں ایک جو کہ انہوں نے بی آر آئی سمٹ ٹوینٹی نائنٹین میں کیا کہ انوائرمنٹل پروٹیکشن مسٹ انڈر پن دا انیشیٹو ٹو پروٹیکٹ دا کامن ہوم وی لیو ان بلڈنگ ہائی کوالٹی سسٹینبل رسک ریزسٹنٹ ریزنیبلی پرائسڈ اینڈ انکلوسو انفراسٹرکچر ول ہیلپ کنٹریز ٹو فلی یوٹیلائز دیر ریسورس انڈاؤمنٹس اور اسی طرح جو باؤ فورم ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی ون ہے اس میں انہوں نے دوبارہ یہ کہا کہ وی ول بلڈ اے کلوزر پارٹنرشپ فار گرین ڈیولپمنٹ وی کوڈ اسٹرینتھن کوآپریشن آن گرین انفراسٹرکچر گرین انرجی اینڈ گرین فائنانس اینڈ امپروو دا بیلٹ اینڈ روڈ انیشیٹو انٹرنیشنل گرین ڈیولپمنٹ پولیشن دا گرین انویسٹمنٹ پرنسپلس فار دا بیلٹ اینڈ روڈ ڈیولپمنٹ اینڈ ادر ملٹی لیٹرل کوآپریشن پلیٹفارمس ٹو میک گرین اے ڈیفائننگ فیچر آف بیلٹ اینڈ روڈ کوآپریشن تو میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ پریزیڈنٹ شی نے ایک بہت اچھا اس ترجیح کو آرٹیکولیٹ کیا ہے اور حکومت پاکستان بھی اسی پہ یقین رکھتی ہے تو آنے والے جو ہمارے منصوبے ہیں چین اور پاکستان کے وہ انشاءاللہ گرین اکانومی کے تصور کو ترویج دیں گے اور ہم انرجی سیکٹر میں بھی اسی بات پہ فوکس کر رہے ہیں کہ آئندہ زیادہ سے زیادہ رینیوبل انرجی کے منصوبوں کو سولر انرجی اور ونڈ انرجی کے منصوبوں کو اس پہ شامل کیا جائے آخر میں میں ایک بات جو ہمیشہ 
हर सी पैक के सेमिनार में कहा करता था कि हम चीन की तरक्की के बहुत मद्दा हैं हम चीन की जो 1980 में चीन की फीकस आमदनी 200 डॉलर थी पाकिस्तान की फीकस आमदनी 300 डॉलर थी ये कल की बात है उन्नीस अपनी जिंदगी में पीछे मुड़ के देखें इट वॉज नॉट टू लॉन्ग अगो आज चीन की फी का सामदनी साढ़े बारह हजार डॉलर से ऊपर है और हमारी फी का सामदनी पंद्रह सौ डॉलर है हमें बेहद खुशी है कि चीन की क्यादत ने हमारा दोस्त और बरदर मुल्क है एक हैरत अंगेज कारनामा किया है मुआवजा किया है सोचने की ये बात है कि हम इस मुआवजे को क्यों नहीं दोहरा सके चीन में एक दफा मैंने उनके एक सीनियर लीडर से पूछा कि आप अगर अपनी तरक्की का राज मुझे मुख्तसर बताना चाहें तो कैसे समझाएंगे उन्होंने कहा कि मैं आपको बड़ा फलसफियाना और किताबी जवाब दे सकता हूं लेकिन चूंकि आप हमारे भाई हैं मैं आपको नहायत इख्तसार से दो जुमलों में इसकी कुंजी बताने की कोशिश करूंगा अगर कोई मुल्क ये दो चीजें कर ले और उसकी पॉलिसियां ठीक हों तो वो दुनिया भर की सरमाकारी के लिए मकना तीस बन के एक ग्रोथ का इंजन बन जाता है उन्होंने कहा कि पॉलिटिकल स्टेबिलिटी सोशल सॉलिडेरिटी और कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ पॉलिसी ये तीन चीजें कि अगर आपके मुल्क में सियासी इस्तेकाम नहीं है अगर आपके मुल्क में समाजी वहदत नहीं है और अगर आपके मुल्क में पॉलिसीज का तसलसल नहीं है तो आप 22 करोड़ लोगों को हजी नमाजी परहेजगार बना के कितना दुनिया का ईमानदार तरीन बना के बैठा दें एक इंच मुल्क आगे नहीं चलेगा जिन मुल्कों ने तरक्की की है उन्होंने पॉलिटिकल स्टेबिलिटी अपनाई है उन्होंने अपने सोसाइटी के अंदर हारमनी पैदा की है और उन्होंने अपने पॉलिसीज के तसलसल को यकीनी बनाया है अगर हम मीशत को टी टेन या टी ट्वेंटी के फॉर्मेट में खेलना चाहेंगे तो हम कहीं नहीं पहुंचेंगे इकतसादी तरक्की को टेस्ट मैच की तरह ही खेला जाता है जैसे कि टेस्ट मैच में जब कोई सेंचुरी बनाता है तो उसके लिए कहते हैं कि यू हैव टू क्राफ्ट योर इनिंग्स बड़े तहमुल के साथ आपको You have to choose your shots. लेकिन जब आप टी टेन या टी ट्वेंटी खेलते हैं तो फिर तुकों के ऊपर खेलते हैं सो so, तुके कुछ देर के लिए तो चलते हैं बट नॉट ओवर लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम तो आई थिंक इट इज अबाउट टाइम वी आर एट ए वेरी क्रिटिकल जंक्चर सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर एनिवर्सरी है और मैं हर जगह ये बात कहता हूं कि मेरे लिए एक बड़ी पर्सनल पेन है कि जब उन्नीस सौ सतानवे में मैं पहली दफा हुकूमत में शामिल हुआ तो मैंने विजन 2010 पे काम किया कि क्यों नहीं मलेशिया की तरह हम भी मुल्क बना सकते हैं दो साल में मार्शाला वो उठा के बाहर गया विजन 2013 में फिर विजन 2025 पे काम किया कि क्यों नहीं हम भी दुनिया की तरह प्लान करके चल सकते और पांच सालों में हम उस पर चल पड़े 2017 में प्राइस वाटर हाउस कूपर्स ने कहा कि पाकिस्तान अगर इसी रफ्तार से चला तो ट्वेंटी तक इट विल बी इन द टॉप ट्वेंटी इकोनॉमी दो में उठा के वो बाहर फेंक दिया फिर डिसकंटिन्यूटी हो गई सब पॉलिसी चेंजेस रिवर्सल हो गई तो आज उसका नतीजा हम भुगत रहे हैं कि हम कहाँ खड़े हैं कि हम सारी दुनिया से कि जी आप कर्जा रोल ओवर कर दो आप थोड़ा हमें और ये सहूलत दे दो ये तो एक खुददार कौम के लिए इस किस्म की चीजें नहीं है जो हकीकी आजादी है उसका सिर्फ एक मतलब है मजबूत मीशत अगर आपकी मीशत मजबूत नहीं है तो फिर आजादी और खुद मुख्तारी का जो तस्वर है वो एक खुद फरेबी है अगर हम हकीकी मानों में आजादी चाहते हैं तो हमें पाकिस्तान की मीशत को मजबूत बनाना है और पाकिस्तान की मीशत को नाकबले तस्वीर बनाना है और पाकिस्तान की मीशत को ग्लोबली कम्पेटिटिव बनाना है यही एक रास्ता है हकीकी आजादी का और ये तब मुमकिन होगा कि अगर हम अपने मुल्क में इस्तेकाम पैदा करें हम अपने मुल्क को इंतजार से बचाएंगे और हम अपने मुल्क की पॉलिसीज में तसलसल रखेंगे आखिर में मैं फिर चीन के सफीर के जरिए चीन की हकूमत 
اور چین کے عوام کا شکریہ ادا کرنا چاہوں گا کہ پاکستان کے عوام کبھی نہیں بھولیں گے کہ جب دنیا میں کوئی ان کا ہاتھ پکڑنے کے لیے تیار نہیں تھا چین کی حکومت اور چین کے عوام نے سی پیک کے ذریعے پاکستان کا ساتھ دیا تھا اور پاکستان کو توانائی کے بحران سے نکلنے میں مدد دی تھی اور پاکستان کے ساتھ ایک ایسا رشتہ استوار کیا تھا جو انشاءاللہ شاء بیس سو تیس تک سی پیک کا جو فریم ورک ہے اس کے ذریعے اس خطے میں پاکستان اپنا اہم کردار ادا کرے گا اور مجھے امید ہے کہ جو اگلی ہماری جوائنٹ کوارڈینیشن کمیٹی جے سی سی میٹنگ جو متوقع ہے اگلے مہینے وہ اس سفر کو آگے لے جانے میں سنگ میل ثابت ہوگی پاکستان زندہ باد your remarks and it's very heartening to note uh, that you uh, mentioned how the government is trying to resolve the pressing issues of uh, the private sector entities uh, chinese as well as non chinese entities in the energy sector so we look forward to reform under your leadership uh, i do understand that our uh, guests would like to interact with the panel over lunch but before that we just want to request brief uh, closing remarks uh, from ambassador uh, non wrong and dr abasleri so maybe ambassador i could request you first uh, for your closing remarks please sir thank you if you sir conclusion remarks but i i'm very happy to have the opportunity to speak more thank you excellency minister professor ikpa i cannot understand urdu but i can guess what you have said because we have so many communication before and your excellency has co-chair seven times the cpac jcc meeting so many chinese friends would like to call you mr cpac i think under your guidance the cpac will get more achievement and i would like to uh, uh, share my some uh, feeling in this meeting and we are very proud that cpac energy project has contributed a lot for pakistani economic and social development and China and Pakistan economic uh, energy cooperation has very huge potential. China government and company have huge successful technology, human resources, and experience. We can share Uh, all this with our iron brothers and those successful projects i mean energy cooperation project will encourage more and more chinese enterprises and banks to invest in pakistan no matter what kind of issues we are facing uh, together I am confident that as Iron Brothers, China and Pakistan can found win-win solution for any issues. Chinese leadership and Pakistani leadership, the two leaderships and the two people take very uh, importance, a huge importance to CPAC with the support of the energy projects and transportation infrastructure projects. We are confident the next step, industrial and modern agriculture cooperation will provide more successful story for China-Pakistan cooperations and provide more tax income for government, more foreign exchange from export, more employees opportunity for the people and bring the true sustainable 
development for China and Pakistan. So this is what I want to say, what I want to share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Excellency. And with this, let me invite uh, Dr. Abu Suley, Executive Director, Sustainable Development Policy Institute for his closing remarks, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Vakar. It's a sort of note of uh, thanks. I just, uh, wanted to uh, thank Honorable uh, Minister for uh, Planning uh, Reforms and Special Initiative and our uh, special guest today, uh, the Excellency uh, Nong Rong uh, and uh, uh, the two other uh, dignitaries, uh, Harun Sharif Sahib and Dr. Santal Sahib, uh, for being part of uh, this uh, uh, first panel. As uh, Zadisab, I'll also acknowledge uh, your uh, excellent presentation, demystifying many myths uh, around CPEC power uh, projects, especially about its tariff uh, and its contribution uh, towards uh, uh, environment and uh, climate change. Uh, SGPI is a part of uh, a Green CPEC Alliance, an alliance uh, uh, formed uh, by Chinese and Pakistani uh, uh, think tanks uh, in order to promote greening and cleaning of CPEC and through it, greening and cleaning of uh, Belt and Road Initiative. And uh, we'll keep on uh, in inviting uh, the guests uh, for such intellectual discussions, intellectual discourse, and uh, uh, we'll uh, provide uh, the summary of uh, the presentations made by uh, Harun Sharif, Hassan Daw Saab, and Jadi Saab uh, for the consumption of uh, uh, Minister. Uh, Minister was busy in uh, Agriculture Task Force meeting since morning. And again, as we mentioned in the morning, that uh, climate smart agriculture and uh, ensuring food security amidst uh, these uh, troubled and uncertain time, uh, it's a uh, uh, foremost priority of uh, current government. Uh, so we ensure. Uh, our full support to government uh, on uh, these issues, food security, climate change, and cleaning and greening inclusive uh, growth and uh, clean and green inclusive development. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, uh, Dr. Abit Sleri. This brings us to a close of uh, this session and let me uh, finally thank uh, Minister Asin Iqbal Saab, uh, Ambassador, uh, Mr. Nonrong, uh, uh, Mr. Hassan Daud Bak Saab, uh, Mr. Harun Sharif, and Zubairi Saab for their presentation. I would also like to thank our organizing team under the leadership of Dr. Hina Aslam and Dr. Shafkat Munir Saab for bringing us all together. And with this, we can continue the deliberations over lunch and the lunch will be served upstairs in the restaurant, please. Our team will guide you. Thank you. We have a group photo of the panel right in front. <laughs>